I am not joking. This seemingly innocent ice cream parlor is a front for something very sinister. Oh. The beloved SpongeBob movie actually has a much darker and tragic meaning to it. I am being 100% serious when I tell you that I think this is my best, most convincing theory yet. And if you thought my evolution theory was dark, well, get ready. This is the Goofy Goober Alien Death Cult Theory. I didn't know that, that was true. A little turtle right there. A little hamster. <laughs> Some birds too. <laughs> Nice, nice color. Hey, uh, what's the biggest animal that you have? Oh boy, Alex has finally <laughs> lost his mind. Goofy Goober Alien Death Cult Theory? What, did he make that in a random word generator? Trust me, there's actually a lot to this theory. And if anyone's qualified to make it, it's me. Yeah, considering it's Considering I made a whole web you series are. about a restaurant being a front for a cult. Here at Pizza Time Pizza, we don't use any preservatives or baked ingredients. Pizza Time Pizza is not a cult. It's but weird. those are the old days. I'm the Spongebob guy now, and there is an insane demand for more of these theories. I mean, the Mrs. Puff one has like 12 million views. What? That is crazy. Thank you guys so that much. Now, this is the part of the video where I try to make you think I'm about to start the theory, but then, oh boy, Might not a sponsor. Pass this one. Everyone loves those. But today, I'm actually sponsored by a company that I'm really okay, excited to I'll talk about. I'll watch this one. Happy Meat Farms is an animal farming company that offers a variety of different delicious meat products. Mm -hmm. In the meat industry, there's so many factory farms out there that force thousands of animals into tight, unlivable yeah, spaces and pump them full of Sally GMOs. But Happy Meat time. Farms is a completely humane and organic alternative. Nice. Every animal has plenty of wide outdoor space to roam free, and every animal is raised 100% naturally with no added chemicals. Good. As an animal lover myself, I am so grateful to good be sponsored to raise by Happy good Meat to Farms. Eat. If you want to learn more about them and what they stand for, go to Happy Meat Farms. Right. Com. Now let's begin the theory. Yep, that was that long. Oh, I'm a goofy is an old ice cream parlor that first appeared in the SpongeBob movie. It's the very definition of a fun, innocent place for children. Yeah. So, how on earth did I come to the conclusion that it's actually an alien death cult? In fact, what even is an alien death cult? Usually, it's a religious group that wants you to believe that one day aliens will come to Earth and take the members of the cult to a better place. And in order to get there, they have to commit mass suicide. The most infamous example of this being Heaven's Gate. Like I said, this is going to be a very dark video with some serious subject matter. So, how does this have anything to do with Goofy Goobers? In the more recent seasons of Spongebob, they've started referencing Goofy Goobers again. In fact, there's even an episode called The Goofy Newbie where Patrick gets a job there. And it's in this episode, when Patrick is watching an employee training video, that I first realized there was something more going on here. Yeah. The story of our ice cream begins with our founder, I've seen that episode, I don't think. For some unexplained reason, was nicknamed Goofy. In 1842, he okay. headed west in a covered ice cream wagon. He served his warm ice cream on rocks and sticks. That's weird From to us humans. beginnings, Goofy Goober has grown into a multi-billion dollar business. You know, it's a pretty standard company video. They just want their employees to wash their hands and keep That's their good. work area clean. Yeah. We only ask that you, one, practice good hygiene. Yeah. Two, maintain good work habits. All right. Nothing out of the ordinary, except there's one more thing that they want you to do. And three, believe in extraterrestrials. Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, you can't go wrong with ice cream. Huh. Unless it's, An organization it's good. <laughs> that wants you to believe in aliens. That couldn't be a Heaven's Gate reference in SpongeBob, could it? No, that that's that's crazy. Yeah, and even if it not. was, it could just be a random throwaway gag. Be. There's no way Goofy Goobers is actually a cult, right? But then Let's I started that. to rewatch every appearance of Goofy Goobers and things took on a whole new meaning. One of the most basic ideas of a cult is that they strip you of your individuality and make you change your entire identity to be about the cult. Yeah, there's and that's a lot of cults exactly out there. what Goofy Goobers does. 
everyone there wears Goofy Goober uniforms just like a cult. I mean, what other restaurant has not just employees, but customers that always dress up in a specific way? And their theme song that is constantly repeated and reinforced is just the simple line, I am a Goofy Goober, yeah. Oh, I'm a Goofy Goober, yeah. Where are all Goofy Goobers, yeah. I'm a Goofy Goober, you're a Goofy Goober. We are all Goofy Goobers. It is literally just a song saying that your whole identity is based people have that in their head Goobers from their and childhood. And in the nah. Spongebob movie, there's a scene where Spongebob and Patrick have to try their best to not sing along scene. to the theme song. That's, and it literally causes them intense pain to not sing along. Oh, yeah. Sing along, Patrick! Why oh, are we trying? Trying so hard! It's as if they've been brainwashed and physically can't stop themselves from singing it. And you can't even just chalk this up to Spongebob and Patrick being weirdos. Two other fish can't stop themselves from singing along, even though it means they'll get beat up for it. Goofy, Goofy, Goober, Goobers, yeah! Uh-oh. Just like how many cults have an icon or god that they worship, Goofy Goobers has the dancing peanut mascot that's all over the restaurant's branding. I mean, just look at how excited all the kids are when he comes out. Goofy Goobers! <laughs> and there's no windows in the whole place. Alright, but just because kids like a mascot doesn't mean that they have some kind of religious worship for them. Well, mm. if you don't believe me, take it from Spongebob himself. Open your eyes, Patrick! We blow bubbles, we eat ice cream, we worship a dancing <gasps> peanut for corn's what? sake! We do not worship him! Patrick, you've been wearing the same Goofy Goober peanut party underpants for three years straight! What do you call that? Worship? In the Spongebob movie video game, there's even a Goofy Goober token that reads, In Goofy We Trust, replacing the word God with Goofy. Hmm, things are looking awfully culty, aren't they? Yes, they Cults are. will also often create reading material about their beliefs for their followers to read, and Goofy Goobers is no exception to this. In the new Spongebob spin-off, The Patrick Star Show, we see a Goofy Goober it. employee reading some kind of book about ice cream. the same guy, the green one. He's not busy working, one. he's choosing to read this in his downtime. I mean, compare him to Squidward, who sometimes reads in his downtime at work. It's not like he's reading about the Krusty Krab. This book looks a lot like it's a doctrine for occult's beliefs. Uh, I don't know, that's some that's a little so stretch right there, like buddy. Their followers to give them money. Now, obviously, Goofy Goobers charges people for ice cream, but they actually convince their followers to trade their money for a made-up Goofy Goober currency. Oh my uh, goodness. I don't know what Plankton's paying you, but if you let us go, I can make it worth your while. What is this? Uh, that, sir, is five Goober dollars. Legal tender at any participating Goofy Goober. This would explain how the Goofy Goober founder, an idiot who sold ice cream on rocks and sticks, turned the company into a multi-billion dollar franchise. He convinced people to believe that aliens would one day take them to a better place and got them to give them all their money. Another tactic that cults use to indoctrinate people is overloading <laughs> them with compliments high. and making them feel special. And that's or exactly what Goofy Goobers does to there. Patrick when he gets a job there. The training video says that they appreciate him. Hello and welcome. As a new Goofy Goober employee, we'd like you to know that we, we appreciate, appreciate you. And then his manager says the exact same thing. <laughs> I'm your manager, and I Here want you to know that I appreciate you. And then despite Patrick messing up and causing chaos, the manager says it once oh, again. Man. I'll give you another chance tomorrow. If it doesn't work out, I'm afraid you're fired. <clears throat> In a most appreciative way. There is no reason. Well, you could be nice about it, but you don't have to say, like, we are like that. You could say, nice job. You could say different things. You don't have to keep saying the same thing over and over again. Or it would sound like that. Is it for the manager to be this appreciative of Patrick after all the terrible work he's done? He's just That's trying to true. emotionally manipulate him. The tactic is especially effective on vulnerable mm. people like children, mm. and we see this in the Patrick Star Show. Not only did Patrick start eating Goofy Goober ice cream when he was too. young, and eventually ended up working there and worshipping their god, but this green kid also grew up to become an employee of like Goofy Goobers. Oh, wow. There's a clear pattern here. Kids who eat the ice cream all eventually join the cult. They are specifically targeting children for indoctrination, but their manipulation goes far beyond just psychological tactics. Trust me, we've just scratched the surface of how far Goofy Goobers will go to brainwash its members. Things are about to get darker. It's a very insane one.
Uh, no, stop, no. Part in the SpongeBob movie Here where SpongeBob go. and Patrick Sorry. go to Goofy Goobers and eat tons of ice cream Wait, all ads. night to the point where Come they become on, completely drunk off of it. It's a really funny scene, but it begs the question, why does the ice cream get them drunk? Maybe that's just how ice cream works in the SpongeBob universe, mm, and it's the show's way of making no. a family-friendly alcohol reference. But we've seen other instances where characters eat tons of ice cream, and it doesn't have this effect on them. Yeah, makes them All right, well, maybe this was just a like one-time full, gag for the like movie, that. and it's not a consistent part of the continuity. But in the season 11 episode called The Cops, we get this scene. Yeah, the creepy goobers, huh? <laughs> One too many goofy goobers oh, again, man. eh, Patrick? <laughs> so, another deliberate reference to Goofy Goober ice cream having a weird alcoholic effect on people. Is it possible that they put something in the ice cream to make people more open to cult indoctrination? Cults have been known to use drugs to keep their followers obedient and suggestible. Yeah. One of the most infamous examples of this being Charles Manson, who used LSD to convince his followers of his beliefs. If this is the case with Goofy Goobers, they'd probably want to make sure everyone there eats as much ice cream as possible. Yeah. And the Goofy Goober building is actually cleverly designed in a way to ensure that this happens. There are no windows in the entire building, mm -hmm. so you can't tell whether it's day or night. And the Goofy Goober oh, clock just has random part. numbers on Not it, so it's impossible to keep track oh. of time. Okay. Because of this, SpongeBob eats ice cream all night and is actually late for work for the very first time. Also, right, can I point out the fact it. that the eyes on the clock seem to follow Patrick around in the Goofy Newbie? It's a really creepy and specific yeah, detail to include. Weird. I mean, we know from the movie that the eyes are usually it's supposed to be looking straight ahead, but here they're always watching Patrick, their next target for indoctrination. Now, if the ice cream is what keeps their followers in line, they definitely want to make sure their employees were eating as much as possible. And it turns out, Goofy Goobers actually has a policy about <laughs> this. Wow. wow, I can't believe Goofy Goobers employees get to eat all the ice cream they want on this job. <laughs> That's not a surprise, huh? The employees get to eat all the ice cream they want. Very interesting. And there's evidence to suggest that the ice cream can do a lot more than just make you suggestible. At the beginning of the Goofy Newbie, Patrick is holding up the line <laughs> asking for samples of ice cream. The employee he's talking he to gets frustrated and calls for security to kick him out. Hey, it samples every flavor you we have. The show? There's something oddly familiar are kicking him out. about he this employee. They Hang wanted on a the ice cream. Isn't that Patrick's sister? Oh. The new spinoff, The Patrick's yeah, Star Show, like is a prequel to the main show that introduces us to Patrick's little sister, Squidina. And here, we see her all grown up working at Goofy Goobers. She's even credited as Squidina and has the same voice actor. In The Patrick Star Show, oh. we actually do see her eating Goofy Goober ice cream as a kid, which fits with the pattern of kids who eat the ice cream eventually getting indoctrinated into the cult. Now, Squidina and Patrick have a very close, loving relationship in The Patrick Star Show, but here, they act like they're total strangers. It's not surprising that Patrick would forget his own sister, but Squidina is always portrayed as being smart. It's almost like she completely forgot about him. One of the biggest tactics that cults use to indoctrinate people is isolating them from their friends yeah. and family to make them more vulnerable and dependent on the cult. And that's exactly what we're seeing here with Squidina. She has no memory of her family. The ice cream might just be affecting her memory as well. I mean, if I she was meant to be some I random reusable character here with no continuity, why would the creators go out of their way to specifically credit her as Squidina, unlike the other random employees who are just credited as employee? Feels like they're deliberately trying to draw attention to it. At the end of the Goofy Newbie, Patrick goes crazy and eats a ton of the ice cream, and then <laughs> the episode ends in a very interesting way. <laughs> now, I don't think Patrick was actually abducted by aliens. I mean, we see him on Earth in the very next episode, and the UFO has the same fake look as the one in the training video. Mm -hmm. I think that because of all the ice cream he ate, he now fully accepts the Goofy Goober's beliefs, and it's caused him to hallucinate the UFO. So, at this point, I'd say we can make a very strong case for Goofy Goobers being a cult, but with this realization comes a very dark and tragic new yeah. meaning for the SpongeBob movie. Believe me, 
you will never look at that movie the same way again. SpongeBob movie. I remember that was the picture when they were the kind of men in that one song. The 2004 SpongeBob movie is my favorite thing to come out of the franchise. It's funny, it's emotional, and it encapsulates everything great about SpongeBob. In yeah, this movie, the, SpongeBob goes on a journey of self discovery nice, and he realizes movie. that he doesn't need to change who he is and grow up to fit into society. He just has to embrace his inner kid and be himself. It's a great message that feels really fitting for the character. But if you replace the word kid with Goofy Goober, SpongeBob's arc takes on a whole new meaning. It's not about SpongeBob embracing being himself. It's about SpongeBob fully accepting the indoctrination and beliefs of the Goofy Goober cult. The movie starts with SpongeBob not getting promoted to manager of the new Krusty Krab, yeah, a job that he sad. desperately wanted and believed yeah, that he him. would get. When he finds out that Squidward got chosen instead of him, it completely destroys him. Cults will target vulnerable people who are at an extremely low point. That's true. And the first place that SpongeBob goes to after <laughs> having his heart broken is Goofy Goobers. After a night of getting drunk off of ice cream, yeah. he becomes resentful of Mr. Krabs yeah, and decides that. to tell him off. I deserve that manager job! Jimmy, <laughs> give it to me! Because you say I'm a kid Well, I am 100% man! And this man has got the biggest baby! <laughs> yeah, I remember that part. I didn't think any of it. In fact, any of if it. King Neptune didn't interrupt and try to kill Mr. Krabs, SpongeBob probably would have quit and been fully able to join the cult. SpongeBob and Patrick go on a quest to retrieve Neptune's crown, and it's almost like every obstacle they face along the way is specifically designed to make SpongeBob and Patrick realize the dark truth about Goofy Goobers, but they fail to do so at every turn. So, they first stop at this tough guy bar that's full of men who beat up anyone that is- We're gonna, um, stop there. Um, the, this one's pretty long, so... I'll put part two. Don't forget to subscribe to see more. And also get notifications if, um, to subscribe. Also, subscribe to Alex Bale for making these theories. And also, I hope you enjoyed it. Most importantly, I hope you enjoyed it. So, I'll see you guys later.